So one of the first things I asked Bob was, how much wood can you process in an hour? If you want to find out the answer, stick around to the end. Folks, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Have a special guest here today. Bob from Mess and Machines was kind enough to make the road trip down. Well, I guess I'm not in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I'm just outside of Kalamazoo, Michigan now. A beautiful, it's the first day of fall, right? Yeah, and it's beautiful here. Oh, it's gorgeous. You know, I mean, it's kind of that, you got that chill in the air, it's feeling good. You guys have seen this on my channel a few times, but not in use. Today's gonna to be a different story. We're gonna show you how this thing works, get it fired up. Eventually we'll put some walks through it too, so may do a part two on that video. Stick around for that. All right, Courtney, it's great to be here. Um, really, it is beautiful weather. I'm very happy about this. Yesterday we were driving, it was 88 degrees. Today I saw a high of 66, so <laughs> it's perfect firewood making weather. Heck yeah. So yeah, I'm Bob from Metsa Machines. Uh, we import quality products from Finland, which are Yapa firewood processors. Rami ATV attachments and Ultratech trailers, all three of which Courtney offers at Goodworks Tractors. Hang, hang on, hey, look at that, really quick. See, I brought over all those Rami attachments. We're gonna hopefully shoot some video on that today as well, all for the ATVs, the UTVs. Look for that one too. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna get this 365 Pro running today. Uh, this is the tractor PTO powered version and how handy that it is at Goodworks Tractors who has many tractors to pick from. So <laughs> we've got one tractor that'll be running the machine. I'm not sure what he's using to load the rack yet, but we're gonna load the rack up pretty soon. Got the 422 mid-range rack. Uh, this is a really good mid-range processing solution for a lot of people. It'll do 14 inch max diameter. It's a good price point for what you can do with this machine. You can do about one to two full cord per hour. So we're gonna get some logs on this thing and uh, make some firewood. Now, you don't have to get the PTO driven version, right? I mean, you can mount this to yes, a three point exactly. the PTO, but there is a right. self-powered version. Right, right. so for, for a person who has one tractor or no tractors, you could have uh, the gas engine powered version, which would be a Honda IGX V-Twin. So turnkey, processor runs off of that. And then if you didn't even want to have a rack, say you didn't have a tractor to put logs onto the rack, you could have a log lifter. So at that point then, you can almost just roll the logs to the machine and lift them up with the hydraulic powered log lifter. Okay. So uh, a lot of customers have started out with the road version, which is on wheels, so you can move it to wherever you need to go. Okay. You got the log lifter, it's got its own gas engine on it. You need minimal equipment then to, yeah. to run it. But in a case where a guy has, say, uh, I don't know how many tractors you have, but <laughs> a lot of tractors, this is a good situation. Yeah, so. yeah for sure. Well, one thing Bob was telling me earlier, and I thought was actually pretty surprising and pretty awesome, is that you go through the whole setup process to make sure everything's dialed in before the customer gets it, right? Right, when we, we bring these in from Finland, uh, we set up every one of them in-house and tension the in-feed belt, the out-feed belt, make sure all the adjustments are in and we'll fire maybe four or five logs through it, make sure everything is good to go so that when a customer gets the stuff, it's minimal setup for them and uh, they can just turn the key and start making firewood. Okay. So it, it does take a little more time, yes, but I think it adds to the customer experience where they're getting something where they can just use it right out of the box. Okay. Now another, I think, probably big question that folks want to know is, well, how does this thing get delivered to me? Yeah, uh, we deliver, we get these delivered all on partial flatbed loads, they call it. So. Okay. Most of the time, um, it's called a hotshot driver where he's got a one ton pickup or a three quarter ton pickup with a gooseneck trailer. Okay. And um, these have pallet fork pockets. So anything that's got pallet forks on it that can lift, I think this machine's about 1800 pounds. Okay. So a customer does need to have a bigger piece of equipment on site to unload the piece of equipment when they get it. Um, but yeah, we ship them all partial flatbed. They're not completely broken down. This would ship with the outfeed conveyor folded up and the infeed belt folded up. Okay. And that literally takes about five minutes of setup when you get the processor. And the racks, we offer the customer either way. They could take it as fully assembled, okay. which usually costs just a little bit more for shipping, or they can take it as unassembled if we need to save on the freight. Okay. So it depends on that. This rack, the 422, takes about two hours to assemble. Um, the 471 is power chains and, and all that. That one takes almost three hours to put together. Okay. So we usually make sure that one is all put together again and the customer doesn't have to worry about it. And so a lot of you guys have, have bought tractors from me and other big pieces of equipment too. And so we use those hot shots a lot as well. And, and if you don't have a piece of equipment at your house that's big enough or you know strong enough to offload this, if you have a buddy in town or your place of work, wherever it is, has a loading dock yeah. or a forklift there, you know you can get it delivered to that. Have you done that before too? Yes, exactly. Um, Loading dock, not as much because you'd still, this is side loaded on the trailer. So okay. you would need to have a forklift on you know level ground. But yeah, we've, a lot of customers have said, well, I can't take delivery at my house, but my friend that's a mile away can, okay. and then they'll figure out how to get it yep. over to his place later. Yep. Um, I've had on the bigger machines, some people would rent the telehandler even oh, to get right. things in place. Um, and even then I think renting the telehandler is between four and $500. So it depends on what it's 
of course, every market's different, so I yeah. can't speak for all of them. But, but in a case like that, we were able to get that 405 exactly where it needed to be oh, okay. um, yeah. on that delivery. Good. So, Good. Okay. All right. So I've got like this much experience using one of these things. So I'm, I'm thankful that Bob was able to come down. He's going to take us through it. This is literally, we, we stuck it in place here, moved some things around. We hooked up the PTO, fired up just to make sure it works. But Bob's going to take us through kind of the controls, the operation, what you need to know about this in order to have some success before you start putting logs through it. Yeah. And, and first thing this morning was making sure that we found a level spot. Um, more so for, for initially where you're going to put the processor is where you want the most level position. So, so if, if we had some unevenness where the rack was, that's not as big of a deal because we got adjustable feet on the racks. Okay. And even if that was way off, you could still cut a couple of cookies with the new processor to um, offset the, you know, the, the depth the shim it where the legs need to be. Yep, yeah. exactly. And um, so once we got the processor in place, you'll see, I think, in this video, how we got this rack into place. And okay. um, from there, it's just going to be going through all the operations of the processor itself. And okay. this is, I think, one of the most easiest processors to use on the market. Is it? Um, you need to use one hand. I mean, really, one hand control does your infeed, your cutting, and your splitting. That's so, so cool. Yeah. yeah. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze. And it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. All right, so I've, I feel like it makes the most sense to start at the beginning of the process and work our way to the end. So uh, again, this whole log rack is optional. Yes. But we have it here. So what we had to do is hook up the hydraulic connections for it. Yep, there's, exactly. There's four hoses, right? Yep, there's four hoses. So on the side of the machine and on any 365 and above, you've got all the valves and the quick couplers built in so you can add any of their racks that they offer. So okay. down at the bottom, we've got this would advance, this is for the singulator or on a power chain rack, that would uh, advance the chains. Okay. And then up here are the ones that power the infeed rollers. All right. And if we weren't using a rack, there'd be a, um, a daisy chain loop that would go in there so the infeed belt would work again. This guy yep. right here, right? That guy right there. Yeah. Okay. Yep, exactly. Okay, so, you know, I'm not that smart of a guy, Bob. What's, <laughs> what's a singulator? All right, so on this rack, it's gravity-based, so your logs are going to come down and they're going to rest here. This bar here is called the singulator. Ah. So when we move the one valve on the machine, this is gonna take the log and flip it over here, but it's also going to disallow any other logs from rolling a forward at the log. same time. Exactly. It's a single log is yeah. what it yeah. actually is. Okay. <laughs> exactly. That, okay, I get it. Yeah, and you can, most of the time we've been, we've been able to double stack this and still been able to get one log at a time. Um, when you do Sweet. triple stack like last weekend at our show, then you'll get two at a time. So that, then it's not a singulator. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? What happens if you get, is it, does it bind it all up? Uh, a little manual labor to get the other log back, yeah. So, <laughs> right, right. so it's easier to just... <laughs> you want to prevent that from happening. Yes, exactly, okay. right, exactly. Right. Now, but these, these infeed rollers and the belt will all work at the same time? Yes, exactly, in okay. sync. So it's nice with this rack because the log falls onto two power feed rollers and the belt at the same time. So you got a lot of grip and a lot of traction pulling that log yeah. into the processor. Yeah. All right. And if, and if we needed to, if you had really long logs, you could take this Yes, we can one take this one off and flip it down. Okay. Or take it off completely if you want it. Okay. So. All right, Bob. So what's next? What's next is the controls. So okay. this right here will power that singulator. Okay. Or if you had the two-chain rack on, that would power that. Okay. So when you do the, the plus, that's going to bring the log forward. And when you go minus, that's going to put the singulator back into the home position. Okay. Um, right. From there, once you have your log on the, on the infeed rollers, you'll push up and go over with this one. Okay. And that's going to run the infeeds in. And when that's running the infeed in, you'll, the log will be coming in here. And then wherever we have our stop set, which is set about 16 inches, the log will hit here. And the belt will spin if you, if you keep trying to go. Uh, but okay. it's a solid positive log stop. So you'll hit that. And once you hit that, then you're ready to cut. And so you're infeeding. Yep. You'll come back like this. And now you'll pull this down to run the saw down. Okay. So the saw will be coming down. It'll be cutting. This is a really important part that I tell everybody to pay attention to. Keep cutting, keep holding this down lever until the log falls in the split chamber and is done moving. Hmm. Once it's done moving and you see it's in there straight, okay. push up. Okay. When you push up, the saw goes home and the splitter starts. All right. All right. If you're holding the saw down like this and something goes diagonal or a big knot lands pointing down and it's sitting like this, yeah. then what you can do at the same time is, you say you're watching that chamber, you push up and open this at the same time. 
saw will go home, splitter won't start because the hood is open. Oh. When the hood is open, the saw won't work and the splitter won't work. Okay, so safety step there. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yep. Hmm. And then you just keep repeating the process. So you'll go over, in feed, hit, cut, split, in feed. But there's another position, so you can run. You yes. Can, is this if, to reverse? If a log is coming in and it starts to go sideways, let's say your last chunk, then you can push up and you can go over. Um, that'll run the that'll run yeah. the in feed belt backwards. That yeah. is a nice thing that the pro version has that the basic does not. Ah. The basic is that uh, manual arm, and when you push on a basic, that runs the in feed, but you can't run it backwards. Okay. So okay. in right. that case, you got to do a little bit of uh, manual labor to get the log back. Yep. So that's a big thing. Um, that some of my customers didn't think would be as big of a thing as it is. Oh, so, really? Yeah, they oh, really, really appreciate having that backwards. Well, good. One of the other things I noticed, too, that you can do, when you get a log that lands in the infeed rollers over there and it, it's kind of crooked or something like that, yeah. I've noticed that I've been able to go back and forth and with the rollers over around. there, Yep. instead of having to go over with a pick and manually adjust it. Huh. So, yeah. Yeah, that's handy. Work smarter, not harder, right? Heck, yeah. Heck, yeah. Let the machine do the work. Here we've got... Hang on, hang on. I okay. gotta ask. Yeah. What, is, what is this for? This is the, the hold down plate. So... Um, and this is actually, you've had this machine about a year, and ha he has this machine a year and hasn't used it yet. So there's now the 365 Pro Plus, which has a redesigned plate here. Oh. It has more of a cup on it, and it's got a handle for lifting it up if you do need to, oh, really? to mess with it a little bit. Yep, so huh. um, I think that's, that's worth addressing. Yeah. Uh, now, can, but, like somebody that has this version, is it a replaceable part if they wanted to get it? You can it? upgrade it, but it, it replaces, this whole arm is new. Oh, now okay. as well. Oh, where it bolts on right down Yep, here. Okay. exactly. But it. it would bolt on there. Okay. And now this already has the holes for it too. There is um, on the on the plus versions, there's a deflector here. So if a crooked piece of wood comes in, oh, instead cool. of it hitting the saw bar, it hits the deflector. Yeah. So th there That's is, nice. those upgrade parts are available um, to, to turn a regular one into a plus. Okay. The only thing you can't do is widen the outlet on the splitter. There's a, um, basically the new ones have wider here oh interesting. they widened that out okay. so okay. um everything else everything else is the frames the same the controls are the same the the, the splitter force the saw everything else is the same okay so, so but is this version still available or is it no the they're all now? the plus now okay yep. all right yep. so they did they did that revision so anything that your customers are going to be getting are going to be the newer revised version of this okay so it, can you can you give a really quick just a real quick summary of what those the plus has features yes yeah. so um so a plus would get this revised um, infeed here, okay. it would get the deflector for this. Uh, they changed the, the log stopper. Actually has, if you want to look at this, the, they, they put a pivoting, uh, there's a swivel piece here. So when you're doing really small stuff, mm. it doesn't go underneath of the yep. log stopper. Yep. They got rid of this shelf that holds the log stopper. Mm. And uh, the, the log stopper is suspended via chain now. So it's oh, hanging up here. Okay. Um, on the plus model, they, they widened out that that uh, splitter outlet basically, okay. if you will. And on the plus model, they also added, on the pro plus models, they also added a uh, speed control on the outfeed conveyor. Okay. So you can slow it down. Yeah, you can slow nice. it down. Cause this is one speed right now and it'll throw, it'll throw the firewood pretty good distance I right bet. now. That's a handy so, feature to yeah. have. Yeah. Um, this one still has the, still has the conveyor slew adjustment on it. So does the plus. So if we push down on this, we can move this conveyor. Um, I did not even realize that. Really? Yeah. That's so you really can. Cool. Yeah. So you can. You That's can really, really nice. Move that quite a bit. Wow. So it's nice if you're filling up like totes, or yeah. if you wanna, you know, if if you wanna make kind of a windrow pile. Sure. Um, yep. Very cool. All right. Well, before you were so rudely yes, interrupted. Yes. Yes. Back to the controls. The so the pro versions have hydraulic knife height adjustment. Basic does not. The basic has a manual lever here. Okay. So that's one of the other big differences where. What do you mean? Hydraulic knife height adjustment? So this one, when we push this down, the yeah. knife will move down. We ah. push it up, it'll move it up. So you can center your Sweet. center your, your split. That's very cool. Okay. Um, and and the, the basic does not? The basic does not. The basic has mechanical here. There's, is, there's like, does anybody um, buy the basic? The basic is actually really popular, yeah. Gosh, it seems like this would almost sell itself with all these yeah. upgrades you get. Yeah. The, it's... Um, Right now, I think it's about a four thousand dollar price difference. Okay. But it is a lot of it's a lot of it's a it's a lot of features you get yeah. for that upgrade. Yeah, certainly. Um, that can make a big difference in performance. Yeah, it depends and how much you're using it too, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're going to be making a ton of firewood, the pro is the way to go because you going like this with your hand all day is a lot right. nicer than going like this. Yeah. You know. Yeah, for sure. So. Okay. Um, all right. Here yeah. Then. So then knife height adjustment, and then this right here is your saw come down pressure. They call it. So hmm. basically. This, when you when you pull this down, your saw is coming down at a set speed, 
yeah. you're going into the wood and let's say you're in harder wood, you might have to turn this up a little bit so that it'll chew in a little more. Yep. Uh, then when you go back to doing the smaller stuff, you might have to go the opposite direction. It depends going from species to species too. Okay. Because sometimes you'll be in birch and then the next one you'll be in red oak, you know, and, yep. and you have to kind of be able to adjust it on the fly. Now, that is one thing on a basic, this might not seem like it would be nicer, but it is because on the basic, you're pulling the saw down. Sure. So you can say, all right, it. this yeah. time I got to go a little, oh, I can, I can put more weight into it or I got to put less weight into it. Yep. Whereas here you're adjusting this. Yeah. So Makes you sense. could also feather this too. Like some people will, you know, they'll start the cut. They'll, they'll adjust this more aggressive. They'll, they'll start the cut. And then once they're almost through the cut, you know, then okay. they'll give it all of the, okay. um, all of the power. And then the last thing is the splitter. You can manually cycle the splitter if you want to as well. So if you had oh. some rounds that you wanted to throw in there or oh, okay. your, your last log that falls in, yeah. then you'll hit, you'll hit the start lever. Nice. You just got to hit it once. You don't have to hold it. Um, splitter will go, go out and come home. Cool. If something goes sideways yeah. and you need to catch it quick, hit it the other way. Wow. That'll stop it. Wow. One of the other cool things is I talked about the safety on when the hood's open, the, the saw and the splitter don't work. Yeah. So what happens is like if we, if the splitter has started and I open the hood, the splitter will be like right here, yep. you know? When I opened the hood, there was a cylinder that popped to send it home. Okay. So basically now when I close the hood, the splitter's gonna go home by itself. Nice. Instead of continuing its yeah, cycle yeah. out into yeah. the wood. So yeah. um, those are cool wow. little things that they, that they built into this that you, know, you wouldn't think of. Yeah, right. All right, so I noticed you got a lot going on here, right? Yeah. It's kind of the heart of the whole thing, it seems like back in here. Yeah. So take us through it. Yeah, so I, I showed you before the log stopper. Yep. One of the cool things is it's a positive log stop, but it also cams out of the way. So this is a cam. When okay. the saw comes down, it relieves pressure so that the log will actually drop into the split oh, chamber. interesting, yeah, that's yep. pretty sweet. So um, there's that, and then we've got our bar oil jug here okay. and our bar, bar oil adjustment here. And this is just a four millimeter set screw. Okay. And the, the farther out it is, the more bar oil you'll get, the farther in, the less. And the way this works is when the chain hits the log and, and gets like a drag on it, basically, this will push bar oil into the bar. Hmm. So it doesn't use it when it doesn't need to. Um, it's not something that's continuously oiling and, and you know, this is going down like crazy. Um, this bar oil will last you a long time. And um, the other thing is if you take the set screw out, you can manually work the plunger. So if you do run it out and you get air in the lines, you know, it takes a lot of, oh, yeah. a lot of saw work to get the oil back there. Yeah. You can take this out and work it manually with, a, with an Allen screw or oh, other blunt object. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. And um, then to adjust your length, Right now, and they purposely have play in this as well. So you've got the play there and you've got that cam action. Okay. Before on a, it used to be a 355, all they had was the play here. And that actually still worked really well, but this cam action is even better um, yeah. as far as keeping it from binding up. So we've got this in inches here, 15, we're between 15 and 16. And you can pull this pin. Some people don't even use this pin. I mean, gravity holds this one in place. Yep. So you can pull this one out and now we can slide this to the next set. Okay. But the cool part is too that there's more than one hole in this, right? So you got three holes here and you got all the holes in here. So there is some fine tuning, you know, you can do, whereas you're not, you know, you're not just, you're not going like two inches at a time. A lot of flexibility. You know? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, it, at least in our neck of the woods, you know, most everybody's doing it, things at 16 inches. That's what I try to go a little bit under. And um, so that's what I have it set to. But, okay. Every market's different. This machine, um, I think this is, this one will do the, the longest length of any of the Yapa processors. This will do 23.6 inches for a max of length. So oh. if people are doing boiler wood, um, this is a good machine for that. And you can still do your normal wood too. Okay. Um, I did a video a while back where we made uh, smoker chunks. I disconnected a linkage in here so that, the, so that the splitter wouldn't automatically go every time the bar came up. And I added a bunch of material here and had this as short as it goes. So I would make like four inch cookies. <laughs> so I cut a bunch of them and I lined them all up and then we did a split cycle. And we made, I don't remember how many, it was, it was a crazy amount of barbecue chunks oh, wow. in like a minute. Huh. So um, it, in every market's different. But in your pile, I saw you had some hickory. So that would be, 
optimal for that. And okay. a guy that is grilling with charcoal, then they got a nice hot fire going. Yep. They put a couple chunks in, yep. they get that extra flavor. So Heck yeah. not to derail the subject, but. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, well, and you can go as short without doing anything. Yeah, you can go You can go as short as, um, I think it's, on this one, well, it's supposed to be just 10? about eight inches. Yeah. Oh, eight inches even. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The factory, the standard knife is this four way. That can be run as a two way as well. When you're doing small stuff like this and you want to just split it two ways, I actually pick the knife all the way up. Yep. So then it goes right underneath of everything. Yep. And um, then to change the knife out, you'll lower it all the way and there's a pin on the underside of the machine we'll pull and uh, you'll swivel this up out of the way, rest it over here, and then you can lift the whole cassette out. Nice. One of the things to note on, on these machines, um, anything above a 315 in the Yapa line has side supports. A lot of other manufacturers don't use side supports. Now, while it does limit us with our diameter, obviously, it, it, it really keeps the knife staying straight and it minimizes deflection. Okay. If we didn't, let's say we hit, the wings only went out to here and there's no side supports on it, when you push that wood in there and it hits a knot, you get a little deflection on the knife huh. and then it's even harder to try and push through it. So um, that's one of the things I really, I really like about these is the cassette style knives. Um, that it's just, they, they hold together a lot better. It seems like a smart design. Okay, so wood is split, coming on out to the conveyor. Yeah. You got a lot of stuff going on kind of in this area. Yep, you can lower this a lot further than what it is right now, but you don't want to go higher than the 45. So you see these two arrows? Yep. Um, I could probably go up just about like that. Huh. That's about as high up as you'd want to go. Okay. But we can lower this a lot further too. Okay. If you wanted to go like right into the bed of a truck or a dump trailer, it doesn't need to be going up that high. Yeah. Um, and then this, this winch has, you know, it'll hold it in place. It's got a, it's got a break in it. So lowering it is easy. Yeah. This conveyor will, there's a pin here. We'll pull this pin and this will fold in half. And then you can winch it up into the machine for all storage. Right. Okay. But once you're all set up like this, you can leave it set up like this forever. You don't need to put this away when you're done wow. using it. Wow. Everything is, these things can sit up. Well, this one sat outside for about a year now, so. It has, yep. <laughs> In the folded up position. Yeah. Got some tumbleweeds, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Now there, it seemed like, using this on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. What do you need to pay attention to? You know, for um, like service points or, yeah. you know. So chain tension, make okay. sure your chain's not loose. Make sure your chain is sharp. Uh, make sure your bar oil is working. On a day-to-day -day basis, there's that. Um, after the first five hours, you'll probably have to retension the outfeed conveyor and maybe the infeed belt as well. Okay. But they're easy to adjust. There's 17 millimeter uh, nuts on there. You'll break them loose and you'll you'll bring the springs out further. Okay. So, um, and on the outfeed, basically you just you're just making the roller go out further to put more tension on it. All right. Okay. I did see. I saw a handful of uh, Zerk fittings on here too. Yeah, there's some on the outfeed conveyor. Okay. Um, there's one on this eccentric for the. On, on that cam that action cam. for here. Yep. Um, and there's some on the rack, okay. but that's about it. Okay. The, uh, the saw shaft is using seal bearings and um, like, the, like the shaft that this actually turns on in here. Oh, all right. That's on, that's on sealed bearings. And um, there's really, really not a ton of maintenance um, involved with these machines, which is one of the reasons I love them and our, and our customers as well, so. Now there's, can you, well, this is the PTO power version hooked yep. up to the back of the tractor, yep. but for the self-powered version. Yes. Is it one engine option or multiple? Yeah, it's engine one. Option? Yep. One, okay. Yep. We use the Honda IGX 700 V Twin. Okay. Um, it's got EFI. It's got electronic governor. Oh, sweet. So it's turn the key and go. Is and that going to be a lot more popular than the PTO powered? Typically, it, it, it is. Okay. Um, 365 Basic and Pro is probably tied with uh, 365 with an engine on it. All right. Like the Basic and Pro PTO ones versus the Pro with the engine. Okay. That's probably about. Okay. That's probably about even. So on the back side of the machine, we've got uh, the hydraulic oil cooler with a 12 volt powered fan on it, which is thermostatically controlled. And then we just need a 12 volt source. So this is going to the tractor. One of the things important to note on a 365s is if it's a tractor PTO one like this, the only electric part on it is the fan. All of the other sawing, splitting functions, the splitter going home and, and, and out and returning and all that, that's all mechanical. So it's a very easy machine to, to work on, to maintain, to use. Yeah. Um, that's one of the reasons we really like them. And on the, on the gas engine version, the electronics are limited to the engine and the fan here. Okay. So there's no extra added stuff. And like the, like the safety for this hood when you open it, it's not a switch. It's not a, it's not a micro switch. It's not electric. It's just a valve. So okay. the valve, when you, open, when you open the hood, it yep. closes off the valve to the saw and the splitter. So wow. um, then we've got PTO shaft. Yep. And 
three point. You don't have to be hooked up to the three point to use it, which also I like because it's stable enough to stand on its own. And one of the things is you don't need, you'll need a bigger tractor to lift it than you would to run it. Because this thing here weighs, what'd you say, about 1,800 yeah, pounds? Yeah, this is so? about 1,800 okay, pounds. So you have to have a pretty good sized tractor to, to want to easily move that around. Yeah, exactly. And but there is a note though on here I wanted to ask about. It says yeah. max RPM 400. Yeah, so we're using a 540 RPM shaft, but we only need to run it at 400 RPM. So okay. the tractor doesn't have to work as much. Yep. Um, it's important to follow that because if you go over that, then you're gonna overheat, you're gonna overheat the uh, oil and the machine. Right. So I noticed on this tractor, we're running it at the, the five, not 540 mark, but the E, 540E mark. Yeah. And I've noticed that on Kubotas and Coyotes as well. If you're at that 540E, okay. it seems to be running this right about 400. Which was so. about, I think the engine RPMs were a little under 2000. Yeah, right so yeah, it's, it's a nice point for the tractor to be at too. Okay. So minimum tractor horsepower, is there a minimum that you can use well, with this? Well, I always recommend between 30 and 35 at the PTO. Obviously there's a little bit of wiggle room there, but to keep us, um, I'd rather be on the safe side than, than you know, uh, what, what is the saying, um, over, what is it? Oh, um, under promise and over deliver. Yeah. I don't want to over promise yeah. and under deliver. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and I didn't want to say it wrong either. <laughs> so yeah. um, I have run personally on a Kubota 3301, which we just looked up, was only 26 at the PTO. Yeah. Yeah. And that ran it perfectly. So, okay. so 33 horse tractor, 35 horse tractor. You said this one is? Well, it's a 38 engine, so I think it's around 30 or so, maybe okay. 31 okay. at the PTO. Yeah, so this will like run this, this will run this, no problem. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, last thing, for the folks that don't have the PTO powered version with the three point, yeah. if you if you get the, if you want to tow it along the road, you yeah. can add on the stand later? Uh, the, 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 no, because the, no. they use different, there's different components for the feet and the axle pan. Okay, so, so if you want to be road worthy. Buy it as the BE road right away. Okay, yep. all right, all yep. right. That's, I think that's important to note, you can't convert it later. Exactly. On. In the beginning of the video, I said, how much wood can you process in an hour? Well, Bob, you're gonna tell us the answer. Yeah, well, it depends on your logs, right? But you can do one to two full cord per hour with this machine. It's hard for a lot of people to believe, but it's true if you've got the right wood and the right operator. Now, uh, at our last trade show, we ran our machine for about three hours, and I wanna say we had about five cord of, log five cord of firewood on the ground. And the pile, it's, it's big, but it's really hard to see what is actually there until it's getting loaded up and taken out of the place, so. And all the truck beds and everything else. All the truck like beds, that, the, the trailer, trailer loads, yeah, it was really <laughs> and cool. And still a pile Yeah, it's still left, yeah. That's yeah. crazy, yeah. an absolute boat, boat, absolute trailer and truck load yeah. of wood. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty folks, well hopefully that gave you a pretty good overview. I learned a heck of a lot about this thing just now, so I'm excited to put it to use. We're gonna do that in the next video coming up. So I do work with all of the lines that Metza has to offer, so your Ultratech trailers, your Rami, uh, equipment for the ATVs and the Yapa as well. Everything's going to ship right from Wisconsin, right? Yep, right from our warehouse in Wisconsin. Yeah, what, what town are you in up there? We are in Merrill, Wisconsin. There we so. go. So shipping nationwide from Merrill, Wisconsin. Yep, and we, uh, everything, like you said, everything we do is test run before it goes out. So yeah, it's pretty sweet. Everything's ready to go when the customer gets it. It's a pretty cool setup, I tell you. And I have leaned on Bob so much. He is just a guru for all of his product lines. Thank you. You're just, you're very good at what you do, very professional. Thank you, thank you, appreciate that. If he doesn't that. know the answer, he knows how to get it quickly. Thanks, Courtney, appreciate that. It's been great working with you as well. Well, well good, good. Yeah. So you can go right to Metz's website, metzmachines.com, or you can get there from our website, goodworkstractors.com. And if you're looking for something else besides a processor, maybe a grapple to go along with your processor, get those logs loaded up on there, well, we'd love to earn your business. Go to goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country too. If you enjoyed today's video and you want to see this thing in action, make sure you hit subscribe below. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. Thanks to Bob as well. Thanks, we'll Courtney. See you soon.